Hello, so um, hi, yeah, this is our latest installment of our Neonates in a Natural Talk. It is me, Amy, and Gemma. Hello. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the importance of having really good quality x rays on NICU and why are we going to do that so the, um, yeah so why we need to have good x-rays is first of all it's obviously an essential diagnostic tool so it's really important that we know um, what's going on with our babies um, and if we get a nice good technique it just means that those images are going to be really good quality and it's going to make it much more accurate um, it's really important that we do it properly so that we reduce any distress to the baby by having poor positioning um, and probably most important is the fact that by getting it right it just means that we can minimise the amount of exposure that the babies have to have to radiation um, because we know with each exposure that they have it increases their risk of childhood cancers and actually adult ones as well. So um, this is quite a busy slide, so we'll just go through it bit by bit, but it's like, how do we decide which x-ray that we need to have? Um, so if we look at the top left-hand one, um, so the most common x-rays we do are chest x-rays, and that's for any baby that we've got any concerns about respiratory problems. Um, we would also use a chest x-ray to check ET positioning and NG tube positioning, um, and also if you had a baby with a suspected clavicle fracture. Um, it's really important when you do a chest x-ray to make sure that it you can see the trachea and the diaphragm. You also want to see the whole of the chest wall um, because we want to see if there's any things like any air leaks or, or anything. We just want to make sure that the whole area is visible. Um, we want to make sure that we can ideally see eight to nine posterior ribs and that's really just to make sure that the whole lung is, uh, is, is, is visible. Um, moving down to the bottom left, we've got abdominal x-rays. So obviously this is for any abdominal concerns. Um, same thing really, we just want to make sure that the whole field of, um, is, is, in, is uh, visible. So we want to make sure that the pubic symphysis and the ischial tuberosities are visible. Um, also make sure that it goes up to the diaphragm so that we can see the lung bases as well. Um, and make sure that the whole of the abdomen wall is visible just because sometimes things like neck for example you get things at sort of in the bottom right hand side so if you get it's just it can be missed um, and you just need to make sure that the whole of the GI tract is covered and that includes um, going right down to the rectum. Um, the top right hand side of this slide shows a baby gram. Um, so obviously that's the chest and the abdomen together. Um, and this is really good for when you put in lines just to see the line position. Um, so it's the whole, uh, the whole, bo um, the whole body excluding the head. Um, and you, again, you just need to make sure that you can see all of those walls as well. Um, but what I would say that if you've got any specific concerns about chest or abdomen, it's really important to do separate chest, uh, separate x-rays because it's a much better quality um, picture that you would get. Um, and then the final one we're going to talk about is in the bottom right hand side, which is the lateral shoot through. Um, if you are suspecting that a baby might have an abdominal perforation, so there might be some free air in the abdominal cavity, you do a lateral shoot through um, and that's where you can see here that the air sort of rises to the top. So you get this sort of classic view where you can see the air at the top. Um, and what you need to do is just make sure all the probes are out of the way um, and that you put the arms above the head and you extend the legs away so that you can get a good view. Okay. Okay, so we're going to talk now about what we need to do before, during and after an x-ray is taken. And the first thing we need to do is obviously confirm that we've got the correct patient. So by checking the baby's hospital number and just ensuring that we know the reason for the x-ray. Um, so confirm what type of x-ray is needed when the radiographer comes up to the unit. Uh, they will probably ask you as well or, or get you to check that this is what they've come to do. So you can confirm, yep, yeah, that that's the, the type of x-ray we've asked for. We need to ensure that any lines and tubes that are required are in position before the x-ray is done. So this is particularly thinking for chest x-rays about making sure the baby's got an NG or an OG in place um, if that is needed. Um, and obviously if they've come to do an x-ray to check for line position um, of other lines, long lines, central lines, that those are too in place as well. Uh, we need to make sure we've removed any clothing that the baby's wearing, that we've taken any blankets off and that the nappy is moved away from the exposure area so that we can get good quality films. We want to remove any probes and electrodes, particularly thinking about ECG leads on the chest. These should be taken off before the x-ray is done. 
and then we need to make sure that any other external lines tubes and probes are moved out of the field of view and positioned correctly so again thinking about umbilical lines making sure that we've moved them to the right side and that those lines are labeled accordingly we also want to make sure that the position of the incubator bed is appropriate. So the bed should be flat for abdominal x-rays and baby grams. And then you want a slight tilt of 10 to 15% for a chest x-ray. This just helps to move the abdomen and the abdominal contents away from the chest uh, and helps to produce a better quality film. And the baby should always be positioned in a supine position. So during the x-ray, uh, the person who's going to be holding the baby needs to wear an x-ray apron to protect them from the radiation. You need to keep the baby's hips and shoulders level and ensure that the spine is straight. You need to support the baby's head in a straight and midline position, so not turning out to either side. Keep it midline, keep the chin up. You need to support the baby's legs, legs abducted with the knees flexed, so just moving those legs slightly out and away from the baby. Support the arms in a flexed position either side of the head. You also need to make sure that if you're the one holding that baby that your hands are not in the exposure field and you can check this uh, before the x-ray is done when they're lining everything up. Just make sure your hands are out um, of shot. Um, and you need to just make sure the infant is settled before the image is taken because we don't want any sudden movements uh, that might affect the quality of the film and mean it has to be repeated. And it's really important to remember that we shouldn't be leaving babies unattended. Babies need to be held for x-rays in order to ensure that we get good quality images and prevent us having to repeat them. Okay, so after the x-ray, so uh, we should check the image quality. Have we got all the areas included that we were hoping to capture? Um, and if it is necessary to repeat the x-ray, um, then we ought to just keep an eye on how many uh, repeated exposures are required and make sure that that is documented. Need to make sure that the image is labelled appropriately um, and that the x-ray has been documented in the notes. For us, that is on the green x-ray sheets. Um, and ensure again that the image is reviewed at the earliest opportunity in order to direct treatment for that baby. Cool, so okay, so now what we're going to do is just a little bit about what's good and what's bad. Um, so here's an example of some good quality x-rays. So if you have a little look at these, you can see with all of them, they're nice and straight. Um, so the, the leads and the probes have been removed out of the, the field that we're looking at. Um, and there's a nice good exposure so you've got a good contrast of the light and dark areas so we can interpret them. Um, the whole area has been captured so if it's the chest you can see the whole of the chest wall and same for the abdomen um, and with the baby on the bottom left you can see that the arms and legs have been moved out of the way but they've been left flexed so it's going to be a bit more comfortable for the baby. Okay so moving on to some of the bad ones. Um, so the baby on the left hand side, you can see that the leads have been left on the chest. So it's really difficult to interpret this because it's covering the area that we're looking at. Also, their head has been put to one side. So the ET tube may well have moved slightly. It's hard to sort of accurately say exactly where it is. Um, with these ones, the, the fields are rotated. So if you look at the um, ribs, they're not particularly symmetrical. So it's really hard to say exactly, you know, where is that heart and how big is it and things like that. So it's just important you want it to look nice and symmetrical. Um, the one that's in the middle on the bottom, um, it's not centralised. You've got a baby to one side. You've got a lot of unnecessary exposure there because you've got the baby's legs and genitals. Um, and you can also see the holder's hand in there. So there's just a lot of extra radiation that's not needed. Um, and then the, the one that's on the right at the top, you can see that that is underexposed, so it's too dark, it's really difficult to interpret, and also there is a probe right in the, the main bit where we want to look at. Okay, so last of all, just to finish, um, we just thought we'd just do a couple of little, like a little quiz really, of these are some things that you might see on x-rays, hopefully you won't, but um, if you do, so if you want to just pause at this point, have a little look at them, see if you can work out what they are, and then we will give you the answers in a minute okay so the image on the top left hand side uh, is a chest and abdo x-ray so a baby gram um, and the first thing to note is that you've obviously on the left hand side of the chest there's a fairly sort of bubbly looking appearance which is actually bowel up in the chest wall so this x-ray is suggestive of congenital diaphragmatic hernia okay in the middle on the top and um, we have got what's looks to be some sort of sutures um, going down the 
the um, sternum so likely to be something like cardiac surgery but the main thing to notice in this one is if you look at the line position uh, the central line has gone way in too far and it's actually curling around the heart so if you were to see this this would need removing like uh, well pulling back very quickly um, the one in the middle on the bottom you can see is a very fluffy looks like cotton wool appearance and this is a very nasty chest x-ray um, which is most likely to be PIE in um, a baby with chronic lung disease Okay, and lastly, on the right hand side, we have an abdo film with very abnormal looking bowel. Uh, so this x-ray, I can tell you straight away, is NEC. Um, what you can see is some large dilated loops of bowel. You can see a very frothy appearance throughout. Um, and you can see uh, pneumatosis, which is suggestive of air within the bowel wall. So it looks like little train tracks around the edge of the bowel as well. So that's a really very sick gut and probably a very sick baby. Okay, so just to sum up what we have chatted about, so just to sort of reiterate, so obviously x-rays are very essential to um, a good diagnosis of what happens when we have a baby on the unit. So it's really important that we um, get them right. Um, also really important to make sure that any central lines we have in are in a safe position. Um, we are wanting to make sure that we are minimising any radiation that we give to the baby by getting it right first time and also by getting the uh, positioning correct it just reduces any distress that they might have by being uncomfortable. Um, and finally it's just to sort of say hopefully by getting it right we can get the correct treatment and get them treated quickly so we get a more successful outcome. Okay, so that comes to the end of our chat. So basically, if you've got any questions at all, as always, just, just speak to the member, uh, one of us in the uh, neonatal nutshell team, <laughs> one of the ANMPs, and um, we're very happy to be emailed or chatted to. So thanks very much for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.